Hi, I've been mainly doing videos on economics and politics on my um, channel, but given that I'm a computer scientist and every now and then the software that I'm using for my economics becomes relevant. I'm going to do a video today on some recent uh, software development I've done over the last week or two. Now, if you recall, I had a video out on Julia, and this presented a challenge for me. I was looking for a language for programming, and I benchmarked Julia and Octave, and it was clear that Julia was going to be much faster. It was surprisingly fast, and it seemed to do matrix multiply faster than the Glasgow Campus. Glasgow Pascal compiler. Now, Glasgow Pascal was developed about 20 years ago, or almost 20 years ago, just after the MMX and SSE instructions became available from Intel. We were doing stereo vision and image processing, and we wanted to speed it up. And at that time, there was a problem that very few of, or no standard compilers provided decent support for auto parallelization of algorithms in order to make use of the SIMD instructions that were becoming available. So I wrote a compiler that would do that, um, and I've used it for a lot of my own software subsequently. It's been released on SourceForge, and with the help of various final year students and PhD students, code generators have been written for a number of platforms. Um, the code generator that is currently the default one was a student contributed one. Ones have been written, were written by students for the Sony PlayStation 2 and the Sony PlayStation 3. And there are various NVIDIA and uh, OpenCL backends as well, which are not terribly fast. But the standard one, I had the impression was pretty high performance and competitive with other compilers when it came to parallelizing. So I was a bit surprised that matrix multiply on Julia seemed so much faster. Now let's look at the tests I ran. I took exactly equal code, for instance, testing, adding all the elements of two matrices. This is, when I say Pascal here, this is Glasgow Vector Pascal, which is not the first Vector Pascal. Some were released for supercomputers before that, but this is the one we've released from Glasgow University. And for matrix multiply, the code is again the same, except uh, Julia uses a star for matrix multiply. Um, Vector Pascal uses the dot operator. If I'd used the star in Pascal, I would have got element by element multiplication, which is equivalent to the dot star in Julia. I did all my tests using a hundred iterations of operations on large matrices for Julia, hundred iterations to allow for the just-in-time compilation, which will take place on the first iteration, to be amortized over a large number of iterations. And if the Matrix is very large. The compile time is small compared to the execute time. And in Pascal, I just averaged over 20 iterations to remove noise as the program is statically compiled. The results were that, that whilst Julia was only about 8% of the speed of Pascal for matrix addition, it was 45 times faster for matrix multiplication. So here I've got it displayed on a log scale. So each of this is a, an increase in speed of an order of magnitude. So we can see that on matrix addition, whether it's 64-bit uh, or 32-bit, um, Julia is at least an order of magnitude slower than Pascal. When we switch to matrix multiplication, the situation is completely reversed. The Julia speed is way, way faster than Pascal. How on earth could there be such a disparity? You'd expect the same sort of um, acceleration for all things. If it was faster on matrix multiply, it should be faster on um, vector addition as well. Then I came to the conclusion that what's happening here 
is that for vector addition or matrix addition, we're using Julia's own code generation process. Whereas for matrix multiply, it'll be calling an optimized matrix multiply routine written in Fortran, which will explain the, the, the big difference. So what we're really seeing on the matrix multiply is the relative speed of my or our Pascal versus highly optimized Fortran. But it still was a, an eye opener. Um, how can the Pascal be so? How can the Fortran be so fast? What does Pascal do when it encounters uh, the dot operator? Well, it expands a statement of the form um, matrix. This is A is a pointer to a matrix, so it's a pointer to a matrix on the heap A. Dereference it to refer to the matrix itself is equal to two matrices multiplied together B and C. Now, what it what does it do? Well, it it applies the textbook matrix multiply routine. It has two outer loops corresponding to the ranges of A, the row and column ranges of A. And for each of those, it sets up a temporary and then does what amounts to an inner product between a row of B and a column of C. So it uh, multiplies rows by columns in the standard way you're supposed to do, then assigns the temporary to, to the element, the appropriate element of A. So that's textbook matrix multiply. And it's expanded in situ wherever the compiler sees that, it expands it and then code generates the expanded code. Why is it so f slow? I get 250 megaflop when running on one core on my Xeon, which seemed, I was, it's not great, but I was used to that. But Julia was getting 45 gigaflops, sorry, 10 gigaflops, 45 times as fast, which seemed an astonishing speed to have achieved. So I wondered, how did it do it? Is Julia running multi-core? So I tried running Pascal on 16 cores. I just, that's just a compiler flag. You say how many threads you want to run it on. And the Pascal speed goes up to 2.27 gigaflops for unaltered code. So it automatically, the, the Pascal compiler will automatically multi-thread the code if you say you're running on multi-threads. And 2.27 gigaflops still sounds pretty good, but it's nowhere near Julia, it's still a fourfold difference. So where's that come from? Now the in situ approach to parallelism is the obvious thing to do if you've got any language that supports statically declared array types, because it avoids having to allocate any heap temporaries when evaluating complex expressions, whether they're matrix multiplies, matrix additions, multiplication of a matrix by a scalar, etc. The problem with having heap allocation uh, is that you may not want your code to run with a garbage collector because garbage collectors can result in um, unpredictable performance. And you also decrease the working set of debt. Sorry, if you have a allocation on the heap, you increase the working set of data, which will degrade your cache performance. Um, and these are pressing concerns for the applications we originally targeted the compiler at, which was image processing um, for stereo vision. But it's not so good for matrix multiply, because if you look at that original algorithm here, the access to the array C, the second array, um, has the row index varying most rapidly. As you go through an iteration, eight adjacent values from each array will be loaded into the cache on a typical Intel machine. But on the following iteration, it will want a, a value from the next row of the C matrix. And this typically will not be in the cache if you're dealing with a large matrix. And this will cause a cache miss. 
and it also gives an organization of the data which inhibits the compiler from using SIMD instructions. The compiler looks at that and decides the elements of C are too far apart, I can't use SIMD instructions. So the standard way in when you want to do high performance um, matrix multiply is that you allocate a temporary matrix. Um, here, you, I've written it as a routine here, which will do a fast matrix multiply between two, two matrices A and B, of which you've got pointers, P pointers to matrices, return a pointer to a matrix. So I allocate a new matrix to hold the result, P, I allocate a new matrix C, which is just a temporary, and I load in to C the transpose of B. And I then do the matrix um, routine after that with the going through the rows of A, the columns of B, and for each one of these I use the, the plus reduction operator uh, to form the inner product. Instead of going as a specific loop, I use the built-in reduction operators that the uh, Pascal provides as, or Array Pascal provides as a, um, a method of parallelizing um, operations. This is, the reduction operator was invented by Iverson in APL, has become widely used in functional languages and form for MapReduce and uh, because I was very influenced by Iverson when writing the Pascal compiler and influenced by Bud's um, APL compiler work, I incorporated the reduction operator. Since C is transposed, when we invoke the built-in vector reduction to compute the op, the inner product is the rows, the data is now organized so its sequential accesses are adjacent in both the A and the B matrix, the A and the C matrix, and cache use improves and SIMD instructions can be generated. And does it work? Yes, it does. It re results in a huge impro impro improvement. In fact, once you cause it to call that uh, library routine, that matrix multiply library routine, it gives you 23 gigaflops performance in the Pascal for 16 cores. Um, so once you do that, it's now twice as fast as Julia. The, the, this is just over the Julia speed, and when I compile it with the AVX instruction set to use longer SIMD, I get around uh, 27, 2 point, 23 gigaflops, from which I deduce that Julia is using basically the same technique, but using a, a good Fortran compiler that compiles it to SSE instructions, which have only got fourfold parallelism, giving roughly the same degree of speed up as um, I get with uh, SSE. I, I'm, I'm a bit faster than them on SSE as well, but it shows you can get an enormous improvement from what appears to be a very minor change in code. What have we done? We've transposed a matrix and we've used a built-in reduction operator and the result is we have a 97-fold speed up of the performance of the code. I've incorporated this into a new release of the compiler in the form of a new uh, library unit which provides generic array of uh, matrix operations on matrices on the heap and we'll, when you use these it'll automatically allocate a new matrix on the heap so there's some garbage collection overhead when you do that. It doesn't override the original facilities of Vector Pascal for applications where you were 
don't want to use garbage collection. So you have to include a, um, a unit which overrides the standard methods. And there's a manual describing how it all works.